NASA today released the findings from its year-long study of UFOs. So a Mexican journalist displayed bodies of two supposed non-human beings, each with three-fingered hands and elongated heads. Zombies, vampires, ghosts, and other spooky beings are usually associated with Halloween. But what if I told you that NASA, the space agency, stumbled upon sightings of these creatures, along with UFOs, on a mysterious piece of land called Skinwalker Ranch? This ordinary-seeming place has suddenly become the center of attention. Are these strange creatures real? Join us as we delve into NASA's leaked findings about Skinwalker Ranch, and let's explore the possibility of otherworldly encounters right here on Earth. Bizarre Sightings Spotted in the Skinwalker Ranch There are many mysterious places on the Earth. The Bermuda Triangle and Area 51 already take the top two spots on that list, and now the Skinwalker Ranch also makes that list. The Skinwalker Ranch is a place that perplexes scientific experts, and even the most uninterested bystanders are horrified. Just as its name implies, the Skinwalker Ranch is a ranch that spans over 500 acres of land in northern Utah's interbasin. In every corner and crevice of the world, there are millions of ranches where farmers rear their cattle, but the entire area encompassed by the Skinwalker Ranch is different. The land of the Skinwalker is a land of legend. There have been multiple legends about this land since the days of early Spanish missionaries. Skinwalker Ranch, according to a notable journalist, George Knapp, has been the site of very surprising paranormal activity. From cattle mutilations to psychic manifestations, the locals have seen it all at the Skinwalker Ranch. The Skinwalker Ranch first came to public attention in the mid-90s when a family, the Shermans, bought the ranch. However, the Sherman family did not bargain for what they experienced and what they saw. They made a vow to tell the entire world about it. And of course, the media are always around to tell stories that send a chill up your spine and stories that make the hair at the back of your neck stand up. And that is exactly is how the story of the Skinwalker Ranch got out. It all started one day after Gwen and Terry Sherman moved into their new place. Of course, they loved it. It represented everything they wanted. It was the perfect idol setting for them, a country home where they could thrive. But everything changed when one day they were terrified by the sudden appearance of a ferocious beast that they could not recognize. It could have been a fox, a wolf, or even a coyote they could not tell. But one thing they could tell was that it came for their livestock. Terry, in a bid to save their livestock, quickly got his shotgun and fired at the beast. Despite not being a professional at handling the gun, Terry knew he was not bad at aiming and hit his target. Then something terrifying happened. The beast was not wounded nor agitated. It did leave them a parting gift though, an odor that would linger for months, the smell of decaying flesh. In the weeks that followed, there would be many reports from visitors of the ranch about unidentified creatures moving in the woods. They could hear the roars too. But this was not the most peculiar thing about the Skinwalker Ranch. There were odd light formations seen hovering and zipping around in the sky. There were also enormous orange circles and blue spheres that flew around as if being directed by some invisible force. But at least all of this was happening in the sky. On the ground, something more ominous was happening. The animals of the ranch had started to die in mysterious, terrible ways. First, their dogs. Their dogs appeared to be burned in the night, and their cows just happened to be mutilated. The surgical precision of these mutilations ruled out a coyote attack. The Shermans and their neighbors, deciding that they could take it no more, decided to go public with the terrifying news of everything going on at the Skinwalker Ranch. And then the lot got thickened when an unlikely character entered the picture. Billionaire property developer Richard Bigelow is a wealthy man with an immense interest in space activities and paranormal activities. Richard personally formed the National Institute for Discovery Science, which he used to research paranormal activities. Money was not a problem for Richard, and he decided to buy the Skinwalker Ranch from the Shermans. The Shermans were not particularly upset about leaving the ranch, and Bigelow, excited about his new purchase, decided to move in. He thought that this provided him the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to explore what was to him a rich tapestry of weird things. The National Institute for Science Discovery, NIDS, quickly got to work on the ranch, installing monitoring devices, an observation site, 
and 24-hour surveillance, all this activity at the ranch quickly sparked conspiracy rumors among UFO enthusiasts, prompting Richard to grant an interview, denying any rumor about an involvement with the CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, and just for the sake of clarity, he also denied making any contact with aliens. Surprisingly, the weird incidents that occurred with the Shermans continued when Bigelow moved in. Although Bigelow and his staff continued to closely monitor the ranch, researchers still saw the same strange lights that the Shermans had reported in their time. Also, something strange occurred at the ranch. World-class equipment would unexpectedly malfunction at important moments, which prevented them from getting video evidence. There were also reports of electrical reports being physically destroyed and being purposefully destroyed as well. Could it have been that something did not want to get recorded on tape? Former Army intelligence officer John Alexander and a frustrated NIDs consultant would later open up in an interview, stating that another precognitive sentient intelligence was at work at the ranch. It also knew everything that the NIDs team would do next, and so their equipment would get destroyed accordingly. Some would have preferred that the story of the Skinwalker Ranch was fabricated, a made-up bedtime story to scare the children and keep them in bed. However, the sheer amount of reports from the ranch and the number of verifiable eyewitnesses, all different eyewitnesses but with similar stories. Even if you did not want to take the Skinwalker seriously, the general reports are enough to make one wary of the place. This has led to the ranch being taken more seriously than the regular UFO hotspots. As a result of the strange events at the ranch, people began to reconsider their opinions about aliens. But the Skinwalker is not just more than a UFO hotspot or an alien stronghold. The name Skinwalker has a long history with the land. Its legend goes way back. Is the Skinwalker haunted? What does legend say about this unusual, mysterious place? The Haunting Legend of the Skinwalker Ranch The ranch is named after one of the most dreaded monsters in Navajo culture and history. Skinwalker is a powerful, malicious witch with the power to transform into various beasts. This somehow relates to Sherman's experience at the ranch. The beast with the foul smell attacked his livestock and did not even balk at the sight of a gun, nor was it affected by the bullet. Nidea's officials also claim to have spotted other creatures, but none of these creatures were ever recorded. There's more when it comes to this ranch. There is a long-standing local legend that links the presence of skinwalkers to a feud between two Native American tribes, the Navajo and the Utes. The Navajo are the more aggressive of the two and seized captives amongst the Utes, and according to a local legend, a territorial struggle caused the Navajo to curse the land and unleash skinwalkers. This does not entirely defeat the idea that it could be aliens involved in the paranormal phenomena at Skinwalker Ranch. Some hold the belief that they are a result of government experiments. What many people do not know is that Skinwalker Ranch was part of a five-year Pentagon funding initiative investigating UFO phenomena. However, to this day, the results remain classified and confidential. There is growing suspicion that Skinwalker Ranch is an interdimensional portal. The concept is that these spaceships enter and leave a parallel realm or alternate reality via these connection points. A plane of existence is adjacent to ours, but that connects to ours very rarely, and only in the night sky and above a ranch in northern Utah called Skinwalker. The ranch would eventually be purchased by a new owner, but even this would not put an end to the mystery that surrounded this property. Whilst some documentaries have been created on the location, many people are in the dark about what happens away from Skinwalker Ranch. Many times, investigators have claimed that paranormal activities follow them home. Brandon Fugel was the next person to purchase the ranch. Brandon Fugel, another real estate developer and someone very interested in the paranormal, began to notice some peculiar behaviors at the ranch. After settling, he assembled his paranormal investigators which were made up of multidisciplinary professionals such as physicists, engineers, and scientists. The other crew members did airborne drone scans, soil investigations, and seismic record assessments to see whether or not there was a natural explanation for everything that had been documented before then. However, one of the men on patrol duty claimed that while entertaining a visitor, he and his security team had an experience. They claim to have seen a 40-50-foot-long silver gray disc-like object 
that performed stunning moves that defied conventional understanding. Fugel insisted that this event occurred during broad daylight and that it was seen by numerous witnesses. He claimed that paranormal activities continued to occur following that incident. They witnessed everything possible, from smartphones being entirely depleted from 80% to 0%, to electromagnetic anomalies, to acute medical events reported by several individuals. However, what was most surprising to Fugel was the admission of unusual occurrences that followed home his investigators. This is known as the Hitcha phenomenon. He claims that the investigators are hesitant to discuss the phenomenon publicly for fear of igniting something. However, he stated that when some colleagues used their instruments to measure, it measured the same readings it did at the ranch in their homes, despite being thousands of miles away. Because of their bad experience, some investigators have vowed never to return to the Skinwalker Ranch. They seek to protect their families and friends from this weird event that seems to accompany visitors. It is not only employees that are determined never to return to the ranch. The previous owner, Richard Bigelow, a man who strongly loved paranormal activities, has vowed never to set foot in the ranch anymore. Taylor, one of the investigators, explained how the Hitcha phenomenon affected him. He said his new car suddenly shut down and all the lights began to blink on and off like crazy, just like he had witnessed at the ranch. Taylor summarized his findings at the Skinwalker Ranch, stating that he had evidence of very strange phenomena occurring that generated radio waves. Gamma radiation, ground vibrations, UFO appearances, strange sounds, and many other things that we simply have no explanation for. Fugel instructs anyone who is visiting his ranch to spiritually prepare themselves, armor themselves, and enter into his gates with humility and reverence. He claims that the visitors will be confronted with weird and potentially harmful energies. Another paranormal researcher, Frank B. Salisbury, proposed three possibilities to explain what was going on at the Skinwalker Ranch. Two of the three are about extraterrestrial creatures and the last one is about the nuts and bolts hypothesis, which states that UFOs or advanced machines are moving through space from civilizations on planets in other solar systems. The other explanation is the Stargate hypothesis, which states that UFOs and other paranormal events are caused by beings with technology who use wormholes to travel from one dimension to another. The United States government is very much interested in UFO claims, and to discover the truth about this phenomenon, it established the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon UAP, task force in 2020 as part of the Office of Naval Intelligence to standardize and collect information about UAP sightings, which would involve examining unauthorized aircraft where the observer cannot immediately identify what he or she is observing. The task force's mission is to detect, assess, and catalog UAPs that may present a threat to the United States of America. Skinwalker Ranch is not the only location in the world that experiences paranormal activities or seismic activities. Some are known to swallow entire boats, planes, etc. whole. We will be checking out other locations around the world that have it just as bad or even worse than the Skinwalker Ranch. Area 51 the secret base of UFOs. Area 51 is the common name of a highly classified United States Air Force, USF, facility within the Nevada Test and Training Range. A remote detachment administered by Edwards Air Force Base, the facility is officially called Homey Airport or Groom Lake after the salt flat next to its airfield. Details of its operations are not made public, but the USAF says that it is an open training range and it is commonly thought to support the development and testing of experimental aircraft and weapon systems. The USAF and CIA acquired the site in 1955, primarily for flight testing the Lockheed U-2 aircraft. The intense secrecy surrounding the base has made it the frequent subject of conspiracy theories and a central component of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, and folklore. It has never been declared a secret base, but all research and occurrences in Area 51 are top-secret sensitive compartmented information. The CIA publicly acknowledged the base's existence on 25 June 2013, following a Freedom of Information Act FOIA, request filed in 2005 and declassified documents detailing its history and purpose. 
Area 51 is located in the southern portion of Nevada, 83 miles, 134 kilometers north-northwest of Las Vegas. The surrounding area is a popular tourist destination, including the small town of Rachel on the extraterrestrial highway. Many of the hypotheses concern underground facilities at Groom or at Papoose Lake, also known as the S4 location, 8.5 miles, 13.7 kilometers south, and include claims of a transcontinental underground railroad system, a disappearing airstrip nicknamed the Cheshire Airstrip, after Lewis Carroll's Cheshire Cat, which briefly appears when water is sprayed onto its camouflaged asphalt, and engineering based on alien technology. In the mid-1950s, civilian aircraft flew under 20,000 feet, while military aircraft flew up to 40,000 feet. The U-2 began flying above 60,000 feet, and there was an increasing number of UFO sighting reports. Sightings occurred most often during early evening hours, when airline pilots flying west saw the U-2's silver wings reflect the setting sun, giving the aircraft a fiery appearance. Many sighting reports came to the Air Force's Project Blue Book, which investigated UFO sightings through air traffic controllers and letters to the government. The project checked U-2 and later Oxcart flight records to eliminate the majority of UFO reports that it received during the late 1950s and 1960s, although it could not reveal to the letter writers the truth behind what they saw. Similarly, veterans of experimental projects such as Oxcart at Area 51 agree that their work inadvertently prompted many of the UFO sightings and other rumors. They believe that the rumors helped maintain secrecy over Area 51's actual operations. The veterans deny the existence of a vast underground railroad system, although many of Area 51's operations did occur underground. Bob Lazar claimed in 1989 that he had worked at Area 51's Sector 4, S4, said to be located underground inside the Papoose Range near Papoose Lake. He claimed that he was contracted to work with alien spacecraft that the government had in its possession. Similarly, the 1996 documentary Dreamland, directed by Bruce Burgess, included an interview with a 71-year-old mechanical engineer who claimed to be a former employee at Area 51 during the 1950s. His claims included that he had worked on a flying disc simulator, which had been based on a disc originating from a crashed extraterrestrial craft and was used to train pilots. He also claimed to have worked with an extraterrestrial being named J-Rod and described as a telepathic translator. In 2004, Dan Burrish, pseudonym of Dan Crane, claimed to have worked on cloning alien viruses at Area 51, also alongside the alien named J-Rod. Burrish's scholarly credentials are the subject of much debate, as he was working as a Las Vegas parole officer in 1989, while also earning a PhD at the State University of New York. In July 2019, more than 2,000 people responded to a joke proposal to storm Area 51, which appeared in an anonymous Facebook post. The event, scheduled for 20th September 2019, was billed as Storm Area 51, They Can't Stop All of Us, an attempt to see them aliens. Air Force spokeswoman Laura McAndrews said the government would discourage anyone from trying to come into the area where they train American armed forces. Two music festivals in rural Nevada, Alien Stock and Storm Area 51 Base Camp were subsequently organized to capitalize on the popularity of the original Facebook event. Between 1,500 and 3,000 people showed up at the festivals, while over 150 people made the journey over several miles of rough roads to get near the gates to Area 51. Seven people were reportedly arrested at the event. Area 51 continues to be an area of speculation because of the secrecy that shrouds that place. It could be possible that the United States government is hiding something from us, but time, the greatest unraveler of all, will tell. One certain thing is that Area 51 has not claimed any lives, at least not that we know yet. Unlike the Devil's Triangle, the Bermuda Triangle and Mysterious Disappearances. The Bermuda Triangle, also known as the Devil's Triangle, is an urban legend focused on a loosely defined region in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean, where several aircraft and ships are said to have disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The idea of the area as uniquely prone to disappearances arose in the mid-20th century, but most reputable sources dismiss the idea that there is any mystery. 
The earliest suggestion of unusual disappearances in the Bermuda area appeared in an article written by Edward Van Winkle Jones of the Miami Herald that was distributed by the Associated Press and appeared in various American newspapers on September 17, 1950. Two years later, Fate magazine published Sea Mystery at Our Back Door, a short article by George X. Sand that was the first to lay out the now familiar triangular area where the losses took place. Sand recounted the loss of several planes and ships since World War II, the disappearance of Sandra, a tramp steamer, the December 1945 loss of Flight 19, a group of five U.S. Navy torpedo bombers on a training mission, the January 1948 disappearance of Star Tiger, a British South American Airways BSAA passenger airplane, the March 1948 disappearance of a fishing skiff with three men, including jockey Albert Snyder, the December 1948 disappearance of an airborne transport DC-3 charter flight en route from Puerto Rico to Miami, and the January 1949 disappearance of Star Ariel, another BSAA passenger airplane. Flight 19 was covered again in the April 1962 issue of the American Legion magazine. In it, author Alan W. Eckert wrote that the flight leader had been heard saying, We cannot be sure of any direction. Everything is wrong, strange. The ocean doesn't look as it should. In February 1964, Vincent Gaddis wrote an article called The Deadly Bermuda Triangle in Argosy, saying Flight 19 and other disappearances were part of a pattern of strange events in the region, dating back to at least 1840. The next year, Gaddis expanded this article into a book, Invisible Horizons. Triangle writers have used several supernatural concepts to explain the events. One explanation pins the blame on leftover technology from the mythical lost continent of Atlantis. Sometimes connected to the Atlantis story is the submerged rock formation known as the Bimini Road off the island of Bimini in the Bahamas, which is in the triangle by some definitions. Followers of the purported psychic Edgar Cayce take his prediction that evidence of Atlantis would be found in 1968 as referring to the discovery of the Bimini Road. Believers describe the formation as a road, wall, or other structure, but the Bimini Road is of natural origin. Some hypothesize that a parallel universe exists in the Bermuda Triangle region, causing a time-space warp that sucks the objects around it into a parallel universe. Others attribute the events to UFOs. Charles Berlitz, author of various books on anomalous phenomena, lists several theories attributing the losses in the triangle to anomalous or unexplained forces. The sail training ship HMS Atalanta, originally named HMS Juno, disappeared with her entire crew after setting sail from the Royal Naval Dockyard Bermuda for Falmouth, England, on 31st January 1880. It was presumed that she sank in a powerful storm that crossed her route a couple of weeks after she sailed, and that her crew being composed primarily of inexperienced trainees may have been a contributing factor. The search for evidence of her fate attracted worldwide attention at the time connection is also often made to the 1878 loss of the training ship HMS Eurydice, which foundered after departing the Royal Naval Dockyard in Bermuda for Portsmouth on 6 March, and she was alleged decades later to have been a victim of the mysterious triangle an allegation resoundingly refuted by the research of author David Francis Rain in 1997. Another notable event that took place in the Devil's Triangle is the sinking of the USS, United States ship Cyclops. The incident resulting in the single largest loss of life in the history of the U.S. Navy, not related to combat, occurred when the Collier Cyclops, carrying a full load of manganese ore and with one engine out of action, went missing without a trace with a crew of 306 sometime after March 4, 1918, after departing the island of Barbados. Although there is no strong evidence for any single theory, many independent theories exist, some blaming storms, some capsizing, and some suggesting that wartime enemy activity was to blame for the loss. In addition, two of Cyclops' sister ships, Proteus and Nereus, were subsequently lost in the North Atlantic during World War II, both ships were transporting heavy loads of metallic ore similar to that which was loaded on Cyclops during her fatal voyage. In all three cases, structural failure due to overloading with a much denser cargo than designed 
is considered the most likely cause of sinking. A pattern allegedly began forming in which vessels traversing the Bermuda Triangle would either disappear or be found abandoned. Then, in December 1945, five Navy bombers carrying 14 men took off from a Fort Lauderdale, Florida airfield to conduct practice bombing runs over some nearby shoals. But with his compasses malfunctioning, the leader of the mission, known as Flight 19, got severely lost. All five planes flew aimlessly until they ran low on fuel and were forced to ditch at sea. That same day, a rescue plane and its 13-man crew also disappeared. After a massive weeks-long search failed to turn up any evidence, the official Navy report declared that it was as if they had flown to Mars. By the time author Vincent Gaddis coined the phrase Bermuda Triangle in a 1964 magazine article, additional mysterious accidents had occurred in the area, including three passenger planes that went down despite having just sent all's well messages. Charles Berlitz, whose grandfather founded the Berlitz Language Schools, stoked the legend even further in 1974 with a sensational bestseller about the legend. Since then, Scores of fellow paranormal writers have blamed the Triangle's supposed lethality on everything from aliens, Atlantis, and sea monsters, to time warps and reverse gravity fields, whereas more scientifically-minded theorists have pointed to magnetic anomalies, water spouts, or huge eruptions of methane gas from the ocean floor. In all probability, however, there is no single theory that solves the mystery. As one skeptic put it, Trying to find a common cause for every Bermuda Triangle disappearance is no more logical than trying to find a common cause for every automobile accident in Arizona. Moreover, although storms, reefs, and the Gulf Stream can cause navigational challenges there, maritime insurance leader Lloyds of London does not recognize the Bermuda Triangle as an especially hazardous place. Neither does the U.S. Coast Guard which says that, in a review of many aircraft and vessel losses in the area over the years, there has been nothing discovered that would indicate that casualties were the result of anything other than physical causes. No extraordinary factors have ever been identified. These anomalies would continue to cause speculation amongst conspiracy theorists. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos.